Hey guys, thanks for tuning into this week's video. My name's Ruth, and if you're new to my channel, welcome. So this week we are gonna do an exercise together. And it's something that I have done personally, which really, I wasn't expecting to have a huge impact on my life, but it really has, and it's changed the way that I think about a lot of things, and it's changed the whole trajectory of the last year for me. So I wanted to share it with you. I wanted to explain the method. It's basically a three step, well, two, two sections, three steps in each section, so six in total. And it's a quick exercise that you can do, that you can then reflect on. And it's all about really working out what your gifts are and kind of what your purpose is and what your heart is saying that you want in your life that maybe your head is kind of not letting you live out. So it's about becoming your best self, understanding who you are, what you want in life, and really being able to tune into this voice in the heart. So that's what I wanna to talk to you about today. So this exercise is something that, as I say, I did nearly a year ago, it's pretty much a year, I think it was the 24th of July, looking back on my notes. And I did it just before a birthday, so I was 33, um, on the 1st of August last year. So I did it just before that birthday and I'm coming up, as you can imagine, um, a year to my next birthday. So it's been a really good uh, tool that I think I've had a lot of transformation from in one year. And it's a particularly poignant time to do an exercise like this around a birthday when, you know, naturally we begin to like reassess where we're at, what we've done in the last year, what we want to happen in the next year. So this exercise could really help you with that. And it's something that will help to give you a lot of clarity. So if you have been doing a lot of work around like um, self-development, if you've been in counseling, if you've been kind of recovering from some sort of life change, whether that's like a, a divorce or the loss of a loved one or reassessing where you're going in your life, maybe like me, you had a 30s crisis or you're having a 40s crisis. So it can help in those areas. And yeah, let's just dive into it. So I'm just gonna get my notes from when I did it last time, so I've got them to hand. And um, so what I'm gonna suggest that you do is you get some a pen and paper to start off with when you do the exercise, and you split it down the middle in two columns. So just like this, split down the middle in two columns. So you've got who you think, I don't even think that you can see this, the light is too bright, it's too sunny. Um, so column one on this side is who you think you are. So just write the title down, who you think you are. And then in the second column, the title is who you wish you were. So we've got two columns, two titles, who you think you are in one column, who you wish you were in the other column. And then what I'm gonna invite you to do is to just tune into those two questions and don't overthink it. Give yourself like, um, I'm trying to think. So the best, the best thing I would say to do is don't overthink, That's this is from a person that overthinks everything. Don't overthink, go with your gut, even if the words that come out onto the paper are not the words that you want to see. It's got to come from the heart, so please don't overthink it. Just write down um, three words, just one word um, in each one. So we don't want sentences, we just want words and it's gotta be who you think you are. So three words to describe who you think you are right now in this moment today. Don't overthink it, just write them down. If you want, you can pause, you can do this live, you could pause the YouTube now and you could go away and do that and then tune back in for the next part. That's your decision. So who you think you are, three words to describe that. And then once you've done that, and even if you don't like what you've put down, it could be ugly, it could be messy, it could be flattering, it could be unflattering, but it's gotta come from the heart and be honest and authentic. Okay, so moving on to the second column, which is, yeah, the, the maybe the fun part or maybe the not fun part, it can be the painful part. So in the second column, who you wish you were, and I want you to do exactly the same thing, but for who you wish you were, 
So what you yearn for, what you long for, what you crave for, what you miss, what you wish, who you wish you were. And again, three words, do not overthink, from the heart, authentic, the real you, writing this down, who you wish you were. So again, up to you. Pause, do it after the video, it's completely up to you. So once you've got those three words in each column, so you've got six words in total, who you think you are and who you wish you were. Sounds simple, doesn't it? Sounds like just nothing. Oh, three words, who I think I am, who I wish I was. However, the power that this exercise can have, and I am testimony to this, is phenomenal. So once you've written down those six words, just look at them. Maybe take like five, ten minutes, as long as you as long as you want, but time to reflect and really witness, bear witness to what you've written down. So what you think you are and what you really, really wish you were. And depending on where you are in your life, the the contrast, the gap between the two can be large. It can be painful. It can leave you feeling very emotional. So it's worth just taking that little bit of time to reflect on what you've written. And I would say in terms of context of doing this exercise, I did it in a group, but I did it in a group that I completely trusted. I did it as part of my counseling course. So I was in a group, a circle that I completely trusted and I knew that no one was gonna judge me. So I felt very comfortable in that group but you could also do it in a pair. If you wanted to do it with a friend, you could do it that way. You could do it completely alone and do all of the reflection on your own. Or you could do it with a counsellor if you wanted to put to them that you wanted to try this exercise and could you use them as a bit of a sponsor or a bit of support to help you with it. So the writing down part is really important. And then the reflection part, as I say, see how you want to do it, whether you want to do it alone, you want to do it with one other person, you want to do it with a group. But I would stress that it would need to be a group of people that you either do it together or if you're going to share it with someone that they need to be really supportive and non-judgmental because the last thing you want to do is share who you think you are and share who you wish you were with, I don't know, a friend that's going to take the mick out of you or not going to be supportive and isn't going to be like on that wavelength of wanting to be in it with you. So be mindful of that. And if it's going to bring up any traumatic stuff for you, it's always good to have the support of a professional to help you. So once you've done it, I think that it's it's really interesting the emotional response that you can have to doing such a simple exercise. Like six words, how many words do we say a day? But these six words can be so powerful. So I'm gonna share with you what I wrote down when I did it and how I felt afterwards and then the impact of a year of sitting with this exercise. And the fact that it's such a simple exercise actually gives it, in my opinion, a lot of weight and a lot of value in your life because you know, you can go and you can talk to therapists and you can talk to friends and you can go through a lot of talking therapy and healing therapies, which are absolutely incredible and very helpful. They all have their place. But such a simple exercise can ha hold a lot of weight because it's something that you can easily refer back to, like a little bit like when you have a eureka moment or someone shares with you a simple phrase or just kind of brings things together in a nutshell. This exercise to me really helped with that. So yeah, let me bear all now and, and share with you what I wrote. So who you think you are. So this was a year ago. So I've written here, kind, sensitive, and then the last one, oh, I, I've, I've already cheated and broken the rules of my own exercise. You can, you can go over, write a little mini sentence if you want. I didn't realize I'd done this. <laughs> Scrap that last rule. So six words or six mini sentences. So the last one, frightened of how much I could be. Deep. Um, who you wish you were. Oh God. Um, right, so I wrote down wild, adventurous, and living from the heart. So in my who you think you are, I'm really proud of those qualities. I'm really proud of being kind. 
I'm very, well, it's a double-edged sword. I'm proud of being sensitive. It gives me a lot of gifts in my life. Frightened of how much I could be. I think I still do, but, you know, lacking that self-esteem, lacking confidence, kind of knowing how much potential you've got. I think Marianne Williamson uses the phrase, we are not, I'm going to get this wrong now. I'm going to paraphrase. So we are not afraid of how little we are. We're actually afraid of how amazing we are, how amazing we can be. Because I think that a lot of people are like that. Like a lot of people don't have confidence or they won't go for things. But sometimes it's not because you think you're too little. You, you, you're kind of afraid to step into the power of who you are. So that was what was going on for me. And I felt like I'd embrace those. And that was part of my identity was a little bit scared, a little bit timid, low self-esteem, sensitive and kind. So when we came to the who you wish you were, this literally had me on my knees. It, we were sharing, we all got the chance to, if we wanted to, to share what we've written down. And I was in floods of tears sharing this. It, I never thought that this exercise was gonna have such a profound impact on me. So the idea of being wild, like I felt like a year ago in my life, I was very in a cage of my own making, you know? Um, so I wasn't able to access that part of me. I've always been kind of drawn to the wild. So I'd love to be in nature as a kid. I loved wild horses. I was obsessed. This is a sign to me. Like we'd go to Chester Zoo near where I live and like there'd be all kinds of lions and tigers and stuff. And all I would be obsessed with was this horse, Provolsky's horse. And it was a wild horse. I think it's the only, one of the only horses left in the world that cannot be tamed and is completely wild. So that says a lot about that part of my heart, the wild part. Adventurous. I wanted to take more risks. I wanted to have adventure in my life. And when I say adventurous, I don't mean like, I don't know, cliche, like I want to travel the world and go on adventure or... I want to be sexually adventurous. It wasn't necessarily tied to a specific type of adventure. It was just the spirit in everything I do of being up for the adventure. So that was my second word in that. And then living from the heart. I talk a lot about this in my videos. The tiger in the head, the deer in the heart, like how important it is to access that part of ourselves that's true and heart-based, heart-centered, and my star sign, which is Leo, um, it's my birthday in a couple of days, is all about living from the heart. Um, it's a very heart-centered sign. So I really didn't feel like I was those things. I wasn't wild, I wasn't adventurous, and I wasn't living from the heart. And admitting those things to myself in this exercise, and admitting that that's actually what I really wanted, I didn't want to scrap the things that I am, but I really wanted to integrate those new things. There was a great deal of pain in acknowledging and seeing it written down and expressing that to another person, other people. I wanna be wild, I wanna be adventurous, I wanna live from the heart and I'm not doing those things. So I think this is the power that it could give you is it may be painful to admit and that's why it's important not to overthink and get into the head, to do this from the heart and to not get wrapped up in, I think I should write this, or I'm gonna censor myself, like write down what, what it is that's living inside you that needs to get out. And the the pain of acknowledging this went on for many, many weeks. It wasn't just a night, it was weeks of it. So it took me some time to, to really acknowledge and accept that I wasn't living these things, they were, needs not wants they were pivotal to my growth and and me becoming the person that i am and you know peeling back the onion and peeling back those layers so i then went on a journey to and i'm still on this journey but we're a year in now so i can really see the strides that i've made in rewilding myself so like i have read a lot of books and i'll put links to some of them below like Christopher Ryan's Sex at Dawn, um, I've read The Continuum Concept by Jean, I wanna say Leadoff, Lidoff, and other books that are about kind of getting back to our hunter-gatherer roots, 
embracing our true nature, embracing our bonobo nature of like we are still apes, we're still animals, we've got this animalistic quality to us. So working on bringing more of that back into my life and listening to podcasts and being connected with people that are are flying that flag and already living that way and accepting themselves has been really key to me being more wild and also as well just letting go of like trying to keep everything in balance all the time letting the balance go letting myself go a little bit wild more and being communion with nature more dancing more music more um more freedom in my body basically starting like pole classes and and things that I've just started recently that again me still on this journey of this wild adventure this adventure spirit of trying new things embracing other parts of myself and living from the heart you know I've been doing that a lot more this exercise is maybe we should just call it living from the heart exercise because it hasn't actually got a name that I know of so living from the heart and really being aware of this I talk about this all the time sorry to bang on but you know the head we we live in a head culture we like are always in our heads we're always processing and we're always um overthinking and controlling and trying to balance everything and keep on top of everything so we're kind of like becoming brains in jars so if you want to get into your heart you want to get into your body then this is a great exercise to do that and feel the sensations like notice how you feel when you're writing this down I felt very hot and the tears were flowing and I felt like constricted and kind of like I was going in on myself to start off with and so it was a process of opening up like physically emotionally mentally so that is the exercise I hope it's helped that I shared how I did it the impact it's had on me as I say pretty much a year since I did it I'm still growing I'm still learning I'm gonna be I like the way I've got like a shadow on my forehead now like I've got a bindi (laughs) that looks funny so yeah it's um it's a great exercise to do if you want to do it near a birthday or a significant life event even better I might redo it now actually because it's my birthday on Thursday so maybe I can redo it and see what else comes out of it and just kind of like not not writing it off as being too simplistic because that's what I did to start off with and you might be watching this thinking yeah you had that experience but I'm not going to have that but just give it a try it doesn't take that long to do see what comes out of it for you I'm just trying to see if I wrote any other notes when I did it I think that's it and if you want to share with me the outcomes when you've done it then absolutely amazing so share in the comments below a lot of people I've noticed prefer to the direct message about these videos so that's absolutely cool as well you can direct message me on YouTube you can direct message me on my Instagram which is in the links below as well so let me know how you get on I really hope it proves to be as powerful for you as it has been in my own progress and my own experience and I just appreciate you for listening to these videos thank you so so much for supporting me and on my living from the heart this this YouTube is part of me living from the heart and I really appreciate every comment every connection I've made since I've started doing this I wouldn't be able to do them without you guys who watch so thank you so much and I will be back next Tuesday with another video. Have a great week. All right. Thank you. Bye.